entire time, in part because of how they died, but in large part because of what they did. They were space travelers, and space is a glamour business for most of us. Every minute spent talking about them was worth it, we think. But they were not the only ones to die in recent days, and so add these names to the list of people whose families mourned and whose children cried. Thomas Gibbons, Daniel Kisling, Gregory Frampton, and Mark Osteen. Between them, they leave nearly 10 children without dads. Their lives and deaths got lost in the tragedy of the shuttle, for they died in Afghanistan. They were what the Army calls night stalkers, soldiers who slip in behind enemy lines in the dark of night. They were killed in a helicopter accident, and they are also heroes. Only in the movies is soldiering glamorous work. For months now, we have paid scant attention to the thousands of American soldiers on duty tonight in Afghanistan. They are there, they are at risk, and sometimes they die, 22 in accidents, another 25 killed by enemy fire. They don't get special reports on the evening news. They probably won't get schools named after them or movies made about their lives. Until this moment, you probably had never heard their names. On a day when the country seems to be taking a step closer to war, it is not a bad thing to remember war's most basic reality. So again, for the record, and because it's right, we remember tonight Thomas Gibbons and Daniel Kisling and Gregory Frampton and Mark Osteen. May their families, like the families of the astronauts, feel the gratitude of their nation. Much of the program tonight will be spent on the subject of Iraq and hope of uh, putting the key puzzle pieces of Columbia back together. The second is one that seems to be taking on even greater importance, a search into the depths of NASA's own computer data, focusing not on the first 81 seconds of Columbia's mission, but on the final 32. Once again, CNN's Miles O'Brien. Take a look at these before and after images. Do you see a difference? Well, neither does NASA. And it is one reason the team investigating the crash of Columbia is placing less emphasis on the theory foam debris falling from the shuttle's external fuel tank might have dislodged or disturbed some insulating tiles sealing Columbia's fate 81 seconds after launch. Right now, it just does not make sense to us that a piece of debris would be the root cause for the loss of Columbia and its crew. There's got to be another reason. Shuttle program manager Ron Didimore brought a piece of the material to illustrate the point. It's not unlike spray-on foam insulation used by do-it-yourselfers. When it cures, it is hard and very light. He says engineers who analyzed this film added weight and speed to their computer models and still concluded the foam strike did not cause serious damage. But what if the foam was coated with ice? The team that inspected Columbia for ice buildup before launch did not report any unusual buildups. I don't think it's ice. I don't think there is a, there is an embedded ice question here. I don't think this came off as a, as a chunk of foam in, solidified with ice. A space shuttle that is falling toward Earth is flown by computer. Didymore says during Columbia's final minutes, hurtling in the darkness, enveloped by red-hot plasma, the autopilot moved flaps called elevons rapidly and fired rocket thrusters to compensate for some drag on the left side. The flight control system is trying to overcome a disturbance. Uh, and it is doing well at maintaining control. But it's losing the battle. That is why investigators are anxious to try and recover some garbled data apparently transmitted by Columbia 32 seconds after mission control lost contact with the crew. They're also hoping debris found in California might offer the best clue yet, since it could tell them what began falling off Columbia first. There's one other way to find out where the problem began. Engineers will take a look at all those high temperature readings which they've recovered from the telemetry data here in Houston, here in the elevons and the side of the fuselage and down here by the wheel well, and they can virtually triangulate the spot where the weakness occurred by using their computer models. So stay tuned on that one, Aaron. Well, we stay tuned on all of it. It, it does feel that we are each day learning less in some respects that things that we thought we knew on Sunday or Monday we are less certain of on Wednesday. 
It's interesting because, you know, how many times do we say, don't put the blinders on, and then we proceeded to go with our leading theory, and here we are today. As you say, the more we know, the less we seem to know. Miles, thank you. We'll see what tomorrow's chapter brings. Miles O'Brien uh, on station in Houston. Tonight, as Newsnight continues, the terror connection. Sheila McVicker reports on the man. The Bush administration connects the... Seven crew members were flown by cargo jet to Dover Air Force Base in Delaware, all of them in flag-draped coffins. Meanwhile, there is an increasing feeling that there is much more to the catastrophic failure of the shuttle than might meet the eye. It has to do with problems with the shuttle that may have been preventable and pieces of the shuttle coming off as far away, perhaps, as California. This while NASA has apparently taken one theory off the table. NBC News correspondent Robert Hager is with us again tonight from the Johnson Space Center in Houston with more. Bob, good evening. Uh, good evening, Brian. Well, not completely off the table, but what they're saying tonight is that they just cannot believe that insulation coming off this exterior fuel tank and knocking tiles off the underside of the wing here on liftoff would be enough to cause this accident alone later on re-entry. Could have contributed, NASA says, but says there must have been something else as well. Right now, it just does not make sense to us that a piece of debris would be the root cause for the loss of Columbia and its crew. There's got to be another reason. Meantime, a grim flight. NASA says remains of what it believes may be all seven astronauts have now been tentatively identified and were flown at midday to the mortuary at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware in flag-draped coffins. As for wreckage, NASA's most interested in what may be found hundreds of miles west of Texas and so could indicate what was coming off the shuttle first. In Joshua Tree, California, local officials held aloft this small piece of debris found in a backyard and said NASA was interested. We described it to them on the phone, and they seemed to feel that it could be from the, from the shuttle. They said it was consistent with something, uh, some part of the shuttle. And about that home video we showed you last night. That is cool. It was taken Saturday by a father and son in Flagstaff, Arizona, and appears to show something coming off the shuttle long before it reaches Texas. Look at the chunks coming off of it. Yeah. What the heck is that? I don't know. NBC analyst James Oberg, for years a NASA engineer, makes this observation. The shuttle goes across the screen with little sparks coming off, but they drop back real fast. And that tells me they're real light. The only light things on the outside of the shuttle are these tiles. But again, NASA believes that there must have been something else as well. One other development, the father of the Israeli astronaut says NASA told him that the astronauts would have had from 60 to 90 seconds after realizing something was drastically wrong until the end. But NASA says that it can't confirm that. Brian? Bob, I guess there's no way to know how candid NASA has been thus far. We do know a lot of the media attention has gone back to Iraq now. Uh, what's likely to happen in the near future? Well, you know, I, I think that we've, we've got a lot of the big information breaks we're going to get about this for a while. It looks to me like that now we sort of burrow under and we're in for the long haul here. And, I mean, this, this one theory of, of the drag of the tiles coming off and maybe some more tiles come off as it re-enters, uh, seeing pictures like those we just saw uh, taken from uh, Flagstaff, and then you get this drag on the uh, left side of the shuttle, pulling it over like this, and just that alone from the Tiles, which a lot of engineers say could happen, just could flip it over and cause that breakup. Uh, to, to, it's a, the only game in town as far as a working theory. Now, uh, to disprove that, uh, it takes a piece of wreckage or something out of that garbled telemetry that they're working with, and I just think that's a long, long time uh, to, to find any smoking gun there. Right? The very latest tonight from Robert Hager at the uh, Johnson uh, Space Center out there in Houston. Bob, thank you, as always.